Good morning to you all and dear uh, dear chair of the session, plenary members, and dear fellow participants uh, coming from the 30 country joining this event. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to share a couple of things, uh, what I have learned in my career. Let me start by saying that when the Beijing summit was uh, taking a place in 1995, I was a young girl. Today, after 25 years, I can see that Nepal has made a notable progress in women's rights, gender equality, and social inclusion. However, the deep-rooted patriarchal norms and practice continue to undermine the women's rights of equality, self-respect, and independence. As Juna talk about, uh, as Juna share about the tra tracking experience from Nepal, how the inspiring girls were went to for the tracking. Nepal has uh, gone through major challenges uh, in the last two decades, following a decade-long armed conflict, uh, a peace process uh, which uh, started in 2006. Uh, transformed the country into a secular republic and federal state. I'm delighted to say that women had a significant role in this transformation. The first elected constituent assembly in 2008 had 197 women member out of six, uh, 601. The second one had 176 women a new constitution was adopted in 2015. Uh, Nepal's uh, constitution has ensured women's representation in federal and provincial parliament, uh, as well as uh, local government uh, bodies, 33% uh, and 40% respectively. Currently, 90 of the 275 MPs are women in lower house. The upper house has 22 women members out of 59. Six of the 10 parliamentary committee are headed by women lawmakers. Election uh, Act has ensured 50% women candidates in leadership position of the local bodies. In 2016, local election where elected as a deputy chair or mayor of 700 local bodies out of 753. Also, 18 women were elected as a mayor or chair. Based on the act, over 6,500 women were elected in a local body. These are Dalit women. And we all know in South Asia, Dalits are highly oppressed caste group. According to 2019 survey that looked over women's representation in the parliament, Nepal ranked second entire in Asia. This is a significant achievement compared to 1999's parliament, which only had a 5.8% women in a parliament. Reservation policy and electoral reform had been instrumental in promoting women's participation in policy-making role. In the Civil Service Act, women have a 33% reservation of the total 45% inclusive quota. Army and Police Act has also made a reservation for women. However, Inclusion uh, of the women from the socially excluded group uh, still, ha still is a major challenge for us. Despite of these positive indicators, women still face multiple challenges. None of the major political parties have a women in decision-making position. Therefore, selection or election of women in any higher position remain under control of the male decision maker in a political party. The legislative ratio of women does not reflect in the mainstream appointments. 
when it comes about the women's inclusion in ministerial position nepal ranks at 123rd position the constitutional principle of the inclusive appointment in the government is uh, also frequently overlooked and women are given a little opportunity the representation in judiciary is a very important factor factors so how nepal is improving constitutional body civil service and security sector is a low three of the 21 judges of the supreme court are female likewise if uh, of the 114 uh, of the um, 148 judges are of, of high court are women in 2019, only three were, women were appointed out of 30 Nepali embassies. It is truly disappointing to see that the political parties have limited women mostly to uh, deputy mayor position in, in the local election. Uh, election. I would say that the women leadership in decision making cannot be achieved without their economic uh, empowerment. Uh, in the local, um, uh, in the global gender gap report of uh, 2018, which looked at women's participation in economy, Nepal ranked 110 among the other 149 participating countries. This shows that Nepali women are discouraged of economic participation factors like their poor social status, access to information, and discriminatory gender practices block women's free access to economic opportunity. For example, um, uh, the Foreign Employment Act uh, prohibited women from seeking foreign employment uh, and foreign domestic work without permission of their guardian or spouse. And the government, although some progress, measures have been introduced uh, recently. And the challenge, a challenge that Nepali government yet has to tackle the tackle is a protection from the violence against women. And I think it's not only Asia, it's a worldwide problem. The violence against women tackle, take a place in forms of trafficking, rape, domestic violence, child marriage, and in Nepal, dowry-related violence, witchcraft, and harmful traditional practices, such as chaupuri or menstrual isolation. Every year, women are dying due to the menstrual isolation. The parliament in uh, 2017 enacted uh, and amended various laws to end violence against women and girls and protect the survivors, such as the Domestic Violence Act, uh, Anti-Trafficking Act, uh, um, the Sexual Harassment Act uh, at Workplace, uh, in 2016, national strategy was adopted to end child marriage. This is the global commitment that Nepal has introduced this policy. Recently, the government has decided to increase punishment in the crime of acid attack uh, to ensure protection of the survivor. Um, national Women Commission has established 24-hour helpline. Uh, to tackle this violence, to to in the, um, to to reconcile or provide the legal assistance to the victims, uh, 240 women and uh, children senior citizen center have been expanded throughout the country in last uh, throughout the country. Uh, in last ten year, um, uh, I have I have seen. Uh, I, I myself have a work with the uh, legislative committees, policymakers, and stakeholders to amend and enact several laws related to the violence against women. Uh, however, weak implementation of the laws remains a critical challenge. Impunity prevails due to failure of proper investigation and prosecution in serious case of the violence against women. Lack of shelter 
and rehabilitation support for the victim is the major challenge. According to uh, our police data, uh, uh, filing the case against violence against women is basically coming the domestic violence and rape and attempt to rape and witchcraft allegation. Uh, uh, it, it, it is a uh, rising uh, during the last five years. Being a state uh, party uh, to the CEDA, along with the other major human rights in instrument, uh, Nepal is uh, committed to guarantee and promote uh, gender equality. The principle of non-discrimination and gender equality have been enshrined uh, in the constitution of Nepal. However, the unequal citizenship provision for women remains in a violation of Article 9 of CEDA. Um, uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, this event is uh, taking a place at a time when COVID pandemic has brought an extraordinary challenge for us. We must not allow pandemic and lockdown to be an excuse for ongoing violation of uh, women's and children, uh, women's and girls' rights. In, in the other hand, we must appreciate the luxury that this gives us to step back and think and organize, to look at our effort so far and learn from them so we bounce back stronger than ever when this nightmare is over. We have still opportunity to meet 2030 SDG goal. I will stop here. I don't want to bore you to giving a longer speech of mine. And I, I, I really very much thank you to the organizer for, for such a wonderful plenary. Uh, I, I, I just uh, listening uh, as a, curiously you all uh, who spoke before me and I, I welcome all the questions if you have. Thank you so much.